Hey, how's it going? This is Johnny and welcome to the channel. So in this video, we're going to go over 10 things that you can use when creating a double page spread. Now you might ask me, what is a double page spread? Well, a double page spread is simply when an artist takes two pages of their comic book series, puts them together and showcase important information. This can also be a fight scene where they showcase a really nice dynamic situation. This can be an establishing shot where they're showcasing what's happening, a scene, a location. This can be multiple panels. Whatever the artist feels necessary, that's what they usually use for a double page spread. So today I wanna to go over 10 tips I have for you guys so you can come up with more dynamic work and so people can really like what you're making. Before we get started, we're creating art tutorials, we're creating tips and tricks, we're doing how-to top 10s, we got everything for you guys. And on top of that, we wanna make sure that you're making money. Yes, putting money in your pocket by doing the thing that you love. So we wanna help you optimize what you love to do to make you some money. So if that sounds great to you, hit that subscribe button and make sure that you're a part of the channel you're a part of the community and we can't wait to have you in it trust me we, we can't we ain't lying we ain't lying so tip number one is to understand the script or the direction you need your double page spread to go in now your script depending on if you have a novel if you're working on a comic book series or maybe this can be something like a cover that you're kind of working on where you have a direction of what's going to be in the scene, who's going to be there, what's taking place. Understand that there's a direction for this double page spread. This ain't a magical random double page spread. You're doing it for a reason. So know what's going to happen or the meaning behind it before you get started. Envision it in your head so eventually you can put it on paper. So if there's a script, read it. Ask the writer, whether that's you or someone else, what they think. And now, because this is something very important, you want to showcase the best information to really depict what's happening. So for something this important, ask the writer, hey, what were you thinking at this moment? So now you guys can come up with things together and maybe you can make slight changes that the writer, he or she didn't even know. So you want to make sure you have a decent understanding of the script. The second thing you want to do is come up with at least, listen, at least three drafts of your double page spread. These are really small, really small sketches of what you want your double page spread to kind of be like. It's not detailed, it's very simple, it's very basic, but you're coming up with three outlines. You might have heard them called names, you might have heard them called thumbnails. There's just three small pieces of sketches. These are sketches, these ain't no real details and what you're depicting, what's happening, and how you want it to be showcased. Typically, ain't nobody else can understand them. That's why they're so quick, and they're helping you showcase an idea before you really get started. Make sure you have your three drafts or your three sketches to help you know what's gonna happen. The third thing you wanna do is make sure that the panels, if you're using more than one, sometimes a double page spread is one big image, but sometimes you use multiple panels. So if you're gonna add panels to the scene, make sure that they complement each other and they work, and it's not not too messy sometimes you can add more than what's needed you want to be careful of doing too much and putting too much on the paper where now the viewer doesn't understand what's happening especially if your work is in black and white no one can really understand as much as you do as an artist so you got to kind of think of if you're the viewer how would it look to them will it look like too much too much clutter where someone doesn't understand what's happening Pay attention and don't add too much. Make sure everything complements and it flows together. The fourth thing you wanna do is lay your pencils off properly. Don't rush into inks. Don't just do something because you see other people do it. Those other artists, those professionals, they've been illustrating for so long, they have their own natural shortcuts. You don't need to follow in that footstep. Lay things out. Before you get started, make sure that it makes sense. Make sure that it looks pleasing and you know exactly what you're doing. So now, if you rush too early, you might have to go back and make corrections, but if you took more time to lay things out properly, you'd have been good, it'd have been more smooth. I'm not saying it'd have been easy, but it'd have been a little more smooth. Do not rush the process. Make sure that your pencils are complete before you start your inking. For each artist, it takes different amounts of time, but understand you have your own personal time. Don't try to jump too early, and don't try to take too long. 
make sure it's something smooth and it's consistent for you directly the fifth thing i want you to do is to use line weights line weights are when you make some parts of the illustration a little thicker while other parts are a little thinner an example of this is in shadow areas of anything if you see something that has a shadow usually that area is darker so if you're working with black and white if there's a shadow on one side of your illustration that area should be a little darker that line should be a little darker but if the sun is hitting or the light is hitting from another angle it should be a little lighter the stroke of your pen shouldn't be as thick on that side while the other side where the shadow is it should be a little thicker the reason why you do this is so your work has a little more variance and it doesn't look flat the sixth thing i want you to do is add some kind of special effect or a little extra to the scene now why do i say that Sometimes lighting can change everything. It can even be an Easter egg of things that happen early in the story. Your extra could be elements. It could be whatever you want it to be, but just add something extra, but don't add too much. It ain't a whole new meal. It's just a little bit, you know what I'm saying? It's like the sauce. Add a little sauce on the side so people can have something extra that they can dip into. The seventh thing you want to do is pay attention to your color schemes. Certain colors showcase certain moods. People feel some type of way when they look at certain things. Some things make you mad, other things make you sad, and they make you feel down. You wanna understand that we associate feelings to colors and colors to feelings. So if you use certain colors at the wrong time, you can actually project the wrong feeling to your viewer. While also, if you don't light things properly, the viewer might be confused at what to look at. If you notice in this illustration, the main scene is underwater, so I had to be careful how much light I do and do not use to where not only it makes sense, but it actually fits the scene. Sometimes you can add or force things in the wrong direction where now your viewer doesn't really comprehend what you're trying to show them. So take the time to realize what colors you need to help elevate your work. The eighth thing I want you to do is add a background. There's nothing wrong with adding a little background. There's a reason why it's called a background because it levels what you're showing them. If there's two characters falling, there's a way in which you can show them that they're falling. If there's two characters fighting or more, showcase the ground. So now you see exactly what's happening, where things are taking place, and now the viewer feels like they're in the scene, that they don't feel like things are just floating. Add the background, it's gonna help. It's not gonna hurt you as long as you add just enough, not too much. That's what everything in life just enough not too much the ninth thing i want you to do and this is extremely important find a way to have fun a double page spread should be something that you enjoy to do find something on that page that you can really like and add yourself to it if you're a person that loves fight scenes add something special to the fight scene if you're a person that loves background add to the background if you're a person that loves animals Maybe draw a cat in the scene. So now you're making sure that you enjoy what you're doing so your work comes out better. You do not want to be a person who doesn't like what they're doing. Make sure that you can find something to have fun with. And then the last thing I want you to do is give yourself at least two days before submitting your work or showcasing your work so you can go over and review if there's any corrections needed. We've all heard of artist block. Well, there's something also called tunnel vision. Artist block is usually something that prevents an artist from doing something or working on a creative project. But tunnel vision can sometimes take you in the opposite direction where you feel like your stuff is better than it really is. In the moment when you look at your art, you look at it and you say, wow, this is amazing. I got it so much better. And then you come back in two days, now you get to see the corrections. Because in that moment, you was focused so deeply on what you was doing, where you're imagining what you did a little better than you really did. So giving yourself two days lets you come back with a fresh set of eyes, a fresh and calm mind, where you didn't focus on something for six to seven to 10 to plus hours, where you sat there and you worked on something, you come back more fresh, relaxed, and now you can really see things and understand what you did well and what you can work on. Sometimes there's not much you need to correct, but other times you might have to find one or two things that you need to take a second to step back so you can step forward. That makes sense, right? Hopefully you understood. Sometimes you gotta step back so you can move a little forward. But the only way you can really step back is if you don't rush, take things in its time, you have your structure so you know exactly what you're doing for each piece and you're being able to look and oversee what you did proper and what you did wrong. And that's gonna help you get the job done. Hopefully you guys love drawing double page spreads just as much as I do. I love adding backgrounds to stuff now. Before I used to hate backgrounds. Now I throw a background in almost anything that I can. 
because I'm enjoying the process and I want you to do the same. So if this video was helpful, let me know which one of these tips was helpful for you and that you use or don't use that you're going to start working with more. Let us know what you want to see next on the channel. These videos that we're posting, some of them are suggested from you guys, while others aren't suggested yet. So make sure that you suggest it in the comment section below so we know exactly what you want to see on Rosa Studios. Even if one day you want to talk about a collaboration, it doesn't matter. Let us know how you're feeling so we can see maybe it could work. Maybe it could happen. But you don't know unless you really shoot your shot. Like the video, share the video. You got some friends and family that will love this content. Share it with them. Most of us know a creator. Most of us know an artist. So make sure that you put it in front of them. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button it takes two seconds there's a notification bell right next to it make sure you notified for all of our videos not one not two not here or there make sure that you're notified when we upload these videos and hit that comment section exactly after you finish the video let us know what you're thinking and we can actually create a better experience for you guys and for us too thanks so much and i'll catch you on the next one there's too many videos man it's a lot of work you know what i'm saying Hustling is a lot of work, yeah, man. Okay. Hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just wait a minute. That don't mean leave the video. That just means finish watching the visual effects. Like, people think you got to be on here 15 minutes talking the whole time. They just enjoy, you know, the art and, and appreciate it. Because, you know, I'm hungry now. I got to go eat my DiGiorno. You know, it ain't delivery. We got more videos coming out. Just enjoy the background. Look at the art. You know, appreciate it. Zoom in if you could. Screenshot it. Whatever you gotta do. Cause it's pizza time. I gotta I gotta go eat my DiGiorno, you know. These videos take a long time. Yep, that's like the pizza alert. That was my phone. Got a timer on for the pizza. I keep burning it. That's my other alarm for the laundry, so gotta do that too. Um yeah. Mm-hmm. Alright, finish watching the video. I I catch y'all later.